If you're searching for an absolutely striking looking peaceful shoaling fish for your community aquarium, then you absolutely must check out the five banded barb. You can see right away how beautiful these fish are. And when the light hits them just right, you can see these wonderful neon green highlights. It really is magnificent when you see it. So the five banded barb is also known as a pentazona barb. Pent refers to five and zona means zones. So five zones. They originate from Southeast Asia. And the ideal conditions for them is going to be soft acidic with a pH between 5 and 7 and a temperature range between about 78 and 84 degrees. They will really appreciate a planted tank, especially with floating plants. They'll enjoy the cover that that provides. They can be a little bit timid, so they'll appreciate having more of their own kind about. I would recommend getting a group of 9 to 11 if you can. That's the sort of numbers where you're going to see the best behaviour and the best coloration in them. And this is where they're completely different than the tiger barb who can be a bit aggressive and nippy. These guys don't show any aggression whatsoever. These guys are no problem at all so you can keep them with a range of tank mates. I've kept them with bigger fish like angels, akara, garami and I've kept them with weir fish like peacock gudgeon, tetra. In fact... My last remaining rummy nose shoals with these guys. That's how relaxed they are. They stick together pretty tightly. That's how I'm saying they're an amazing shoaling fish. And there's nothing like seeing them bomb from one side of the tank to the other in a wee squadron. That means you're going to see them best in a longer tank. I wouldn't recommend anything, well, bare minimum a 20 gallon. And like I say, longer if possible rather than taller. They tend to use the lower and mid levels of the tank most often. You very rarely see them near the surface. In fact, they do prefer dimmer lighting. So if you've got floating plants, it will help them feel a lot more comfortable. When they're not bombing from one end of the tank to the other, they do kind of hover in a wee group. And again, your plants are going to help with that. They like the cover and the security of being in amongst them. They all use plants for spawning as well, but... They have no parental care whatsoever. In fact, the adults will probably eat the eggs. And if you've got them in a community tank, the other fish certainly will. You might find the odd fry pop up, but if you're wanting to breed them, you're really going to need a, a separate breeding tank for that. It's relatively straightforward to sex them. The males will be slightly smaller and slimmer, and they'll exhibit the best colours, whereas the females are a little more dull, slightly more fuller in the body. They max out at about 2 inches. They're a little bit smaller than their more boisterous cousins, the tiger barb. They're not quite as full in the body either. But I've got to say, in my opinion, they're significantly prettier. And they have a much more relaxed attitude. So in the wild, they'd be considered a micro predator. So they'd be eating small insects, worms, zooplankton, crustaceans, stuff like that. In the aquarium, they'll accept most things, flake, pellet, frozen. Offering a meaty element to their diet will certainly keep them in the best condition. And if you are able to offer a little bit of live food, the likes of Daphne are, they'll certainly appreciate that. They need a vegetation element in their diet as well, so any blanched vegetables that you'd give most community fish, I would offer to these guys. You need to remember they do inhabit the lower levels of the tank as well. If you keep them with any fish that stay at the surface and are quick eaters, you need to make sure some of the food is sinking down to the barbs down there. And then in turn, if you're keeping them with the likes of Cory catfish, you need to make sure food's getting all the way to the bottom. A couple of ways of achieving that would be to feed different foods at different areas of the tank simultaneously. Alternatively, you can drop food where there's really, really good flow, like in the front of a filter outlet, so it's going to spread the food throughout the tank. And when I'm offering vegetables, I sink some to the bottom on a fork and I use a food clip to make sure there's some higher up for the fish at the top. I'm going to stick my neck out a little bit here and say they are the ultimate community fish. They are pretty. They are non-aggressive. They show really, really, really well. 
obviously in bigger numbers they're going to be more confident they are interesting to watch they are easy to keep you can keep them with a wide range of other fish i said 20 gallon minimum for these guys but you really are going to see the best behavior if you can get as big a tank as you possibly can i'm trying to come up with a negative about these guys but honestly i don't think there is one <laughs>